I'm Chris. I'm Christy. And this is the Washing Up Podcast. And we've just had Bread Week. Oh, yes, we have. Oh, haven't we ever. And something, something penis. <laughs> I'm seeing it to the point. Yeah. Something, something penis. So much bready penis. Oh, it was... You know, Andrew last year candied his nuts and and gave us gave us a, a candied penis. But well, Julia, this year as we'll get to when we get to the showstopper, it stopped the show. I was waiting for Paul to yell out "Muzzle Toff" <laughs> after he performed a bris on that. <laughs> so we'll get to that. We'll, we'll get to that shortly. We'll start mm. with tea cakes, which are not as interesting as anything else on the show. But we'll start with tea cakes, nevertheless. Yeah, I thought it was a great idea. I mean, it wasn't a sponge, was it? No, it wasn't a sponge. Again, it's bread week, though, so... Yeah. There was no kibata <sighs> in honour yeah. of Alvin. Yeah, but, you know, they have to move on from that. No, no, no. A... At one point, Paul, someone in the bread t- um, showstopper, mm. he praised them and said they'd made a kibata as part of what they were doing. And I could almost hear Alvin going, ooh. <laughs> he's me. He's, he's, kibata. he's summoned. <laughs> you just say Kibata three times. For anyone who has no idea why we're prattling on about Alvin and Kibata, um, two seasons ago now in Great British Bake Off, of course, was when mm. every week somehow uh, Alvin worked in Kibata. Kibata. And then he went to Bread Week. And you've and never seen anyone happier. Because he could finally make Finally, kibata. there was a reason to make Kibata. And basically mm-hmm. he just made, that was where he made what was the equivalent of Pile of bread. <laughs> that was his bread sculpture. And unfortunately for him, that year he was up against, well, even though these were brilliant, possibly still the greatest bread sculpture ever made, the lion. The lion. It was, so, it was the Paddle Pop's cousin. And I would actually say the lion was, even though these were brilliant, Yeah, I still maintain the lion was better. Because yeah. the, he was, didn't colour that. It was just different tones of bread. Yeah, but that, then again, tonight's. Well, we, we're going to get to the showstoppers, so maybe we, we should. We will. We'll, so we'll so just... let's start with tea cake. Now, mm-hmm. the problem that I have with tea cakes is I'm a bit anti-fruit in bread. Why? I'm a lot anti-fruit Why in bread. Why are you fruitist? I'm a fruitist, apparently, yes. I, I don't, it's always sultanas. Mm-hmm. It's always sultanas. I'm Look, not... they're not pleasant. No. And, like, the, when you're a kid. It, it flashes and you're... you back to those, yeah. When you're a kid and you, and you get your finger buns and... You know, you have to ask for the ones without sultanas, so I you can just have it. a bit of coconut. I can do it in a finger bun. But as you get older, I can't do a fruit cake. I'm not a fruit cake. No, I can't person. do a fruit cake either. And my big problem, though, is mm. that it flashes me back yeah. to when you'd go and visit somebody and they'd decide that the snack for the children was the little bag of oh, sal- little packet of sultanas. That. Like I told you about Mr. B. Hag when we yeah, went to the movies and he gave us all the fucking packet of scroggin. Give <laughs> you fucking scroggin at the movies. Like at least sneak in a packet of like, you know, the little Smith's chips. Like fucking scroggin. Exactly. Yeah. I anyway. I just love the fact he carried scroggin. <laughs> Who hey does, look. Who does that? And, you know, he probably had a packet of prunes in the <laughs> glove box. Hey. Say what you want. It was regular. <laughs> So, so tea cakes again. Yeah. I'm a bit fruitist in, in my approach to tea cakes. But I think I think what the problem is is that we don't get the varied flavors in in fruity cakes that we get that we saw tonight. Like there was some beautiful ones coming through. Like look at Yans. It was like um, Indian inspired, and and there was um, the the Christmassy inspired one. Well, with Stephen the had the, Stephen had his. It was supposed to be Indian inspired, but then suddenly he had a vodka thing. And the Which, problem with that is? Well, well, the problem with that is that Mary Berry is no longer a judge. <laughs> and he seemed to forget that he wasn't making it for Mary Berry. Although Prue did seem to approve Prue, the vodka. vodka. <laughs> look, Mary probably gave her a bit of a handover <laughs> and, see, and said, look, the more booze you can get out of these people, the better your life will be. Look, just start intimating that their bakes aren't very good and they'll mm. try to get you drunk. And, <laughs> yeah. in fact, Stephen tried at one point tonight when, when <laughs> there's about his, his, his tea cake and they were like, oh, it's overproved. And then... He, they tasted the vodka cocktail and they went, oh, that's great. Oh, it's pretty heavy, though. And he goes, do you want to try my bread again now and see if you've got a different opinion of it? And Paul's Paul. gone, it's overproved. <laughs> <laughs> so the best thing that Stephen seemed to make in that tea cake was the vodka. Mm. Um, Stacey, yeah. g- which gave me one of my favourite Prue lines of the evening, which was, well, it looks like a tea cake and it feels like a tea cake. Well done, Prue. Um, one of my favourite things is seeing the difference in um, language in, in the border. Like here in Australia, you know, we have is it a scallop 
or a potato cake. In in um, England, apparently you can get confused if you cross the border to Scotland and ask for a tea cake, you'll get some chocolatey thing that the Scottish dude was talking about. Of course you will. Yeah. Because, you know, Scotland. Scotland. Yeah. Well, I'm surprised it's not deep fried. <laughs> you could probably get deep fried tea cake up there. You could probably get deep fried everything up there. <laughs> um, so Tom's was apparently, were apparently quite nice. Mm. They looked really good. They tasted really good. There was only one thing they were missing, which was fruit. Oh, yeah, that's the Scottish dude, isn't it, Tom? No, Tom Tom was the guy who did the roses later on as well. Yeah, that's Scottish yeah, dude. Did, I, don't, I, don't pay attention. I don't pay as much attention to accents as some people. <laughs> um, you've been watching a lot of Outlander. Um, <laughs> Dreaming a lot of Outlander. <laughs> All right, anyway, back the- <laughs> back, we're back. We're back to the land of the living. Yes. And Sophie did a pretty good job with her tea cakes too. Some of them, they looked a little bit more like tea, tea biscuits than tea cakes. Yeah. They were quite flat. The proving was proving was the word of the night tonight. Like tea pancakes. Yeah, pr- proving was the word of the night right up until the penis appeared. But, <laughs> but up until the point of the penis, it was it was it was proving. Um, and mm. and it, it seems she got a good rise out of the penis. <laughs> <laughs> she did too. Um, and then I also liked it. It was during this challenge where Noel decided he was going to be silly and play the teacups and smashed one. Which it I was perfect. Was, I thought it was perfect. It was very. You couldn't have you couldn't have scripted that, but if you did, that's what would have happened. It's exactly what would have happened. It was wonderful. Mm. Now, at this point, we also got the first hint of one of the the staples of bread week. Mm. Which is Paul fingering his dough. Now, <laughs> no, 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 wasn't that the... No, no, Paul starts off by fingering the dough when he when he tests the bread to see oh, if it's right on got it. got you, okay. So Paul, yeah. has, Paul has his fingering technique. Mm. Um, Last week we saw how he treats the clitoris. Yes, this week this week he was, he was first of all, he was pressing into the bread to see how baked it was. Mm. That's, his, that's his dough fingering technique yeah. once it's cooked. Yeah. There's a different technique when it's not. Uh-huh. And, and they discussed it. So mm-hmm. we'll get to the technical now. So in the technical, Stacy demonstrated. Yeah. So in the in the technical, which was referred to as the Paul Drag Race, which was <laughs> Paul's Drag beautiful. Race. Beautiful. They did a cottage loaf. Now the cottage loaf you have to mix by hand. Yeah. Um, and they cut to the instruction part where where they sit there and they talk about why have you chosen this? And they usually say something quite formal and you know mm. I wanted to give them a bit of a challenge. And then there's some harmless pun. And everyone goes ha 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 ha, <laughs> and we cut to the tent. At this point. This is where Paul was talking about putting the fingers in there and working them around, and Pruger's book said him and goes, you flower your fingers first, don't you, so that nothing sticks. And Paul looked at her with a smirk and went, or oil them up from time to time. <laughs> and, and you just heard Sue from afar. <laughs> you can just hear, you can Good just one, Paul. Sue and Mel off, and then he's just going, nice work. <laughs> and then Stacey to Stacey, and Stacey seemed... Quite au fait with Paul's fingering technique. <laughs> yes. She was... I wonder if she got um, some one-to-one tuition she on was, Paul's fingering technique. She was getting the fingers way down in there and, and twisting. And, mm, you know, and just up and down and twisting. Yeah, She seemed to be thorough. Um, the dough seemed to appreciate it too. She seemed, really to, hit, responsive. She seemed to hit every every part of the dough that, that was... Needed you know, to be hit. And again, by the time she then tested it out, it, it seemed quite responsive. And, seemed and like it was, you know, if you know how to finger your dough correctly... You win, you know, first you in the, the technical. Challenge, which is exactly what she did. It exactly. just goes to show you, gentlemen and, and ladies. And ladies. Take your time. Learn your technique. Mm. It's all in the technique. Uh, and read up on what Paul Hollywood does, apparently. he's mm. He's got it made. Well, apparently so. Um, now, this was another one of those challenges where they gave great instructions. <laughs> so they give them the instructions on how to make on, on how to make the cottage loaf. And again, the whole thing with the cottage loaf is made by hand. There is no mixer involved, and it's a bigger loaf with a smaller loaf on top of it. Now, I just I have a query because like usually with things like for example Cornish pasties, they made them with like this big chunk on the end so the miners could eat down to that and then throw that butt away because you know they had coaly fingers. Mm. I just want to know the purpose of the cottage loaf. Like, was the top bit for the kids and the bottom bit for the... I, I just naturally assume that when you're making a cottage loaf, it's probably you have a hell of a lot of dough left. And you're like, if you're made, making a loaf of bread in a cottage, it's probably got a smaller sort of manual oven. Yeah. You made all the, you made all the dough and you had this big loaf and you want to make this massive loaf, so you put a smaller one on top of it to bake it in on top. Oh, or I maybe... Would, that... I'm inventing that, by the way. It could be absolute bullshit. Or do you think that the person, like the um, creature creator of BB-8, went back in time 
Well, according to Yen, Yen, <laughs> Yen was the person, and and, and, and I like right, the fact that so. I like the fact that Yen pointed it out, given that her one didn't really rise at no, all and no. didn't look like BB-8. But Yen was the one who in the, in the in the tent who looked around and went, looks a bit like BB-8. Yes. Um, <laughs> so, in the instructions, hmm. Paul Hollywood gives them the instructions on how to make everything, and then goes, prove. <laughs> then has the take that take it out, bake. Take it out, do the first bake. Now take it out, make the adjustments, prove. Yes. A second time. Just just prove, take it out, mm-hmm. prove. That was it. They were the only instructions. Yep. Everyone was following the lead of everyone else differently, as, as at one point Flo put it, the blind leading the blind. <laughs> um, Kate then had a disaster. <laughs> nice treat too, by the way. Thank you, thank you. It was a disaster. I felt really bad for poor Kate. It, it sort mm. of, it sat perfectly. But as we talked about before, mm. you've got to know your fingering technique. <laughs> exactly. And Paul actually then explained, which is yeah. what I liked about this. Paul explained why you do that. He did. And if you notice, um, what's a facey? Um, it was Kate, yeah, mm. who didn't finger her. She didn't even use an implement to no. to work her dough. No, exactly. <laughs> to, no, to, manual, no manual working whatsoever. There was no, there was no impetus there. And like again, look, how can how can you help her if she won't take up take up a little bit of self help? Exactly. And, and and so what Paul said was that by doing the finger work in the middle of in the middle of the loaf, what you're actually doing is allowing making sure that top bit is bound to the bottom bit, mm. so it doesn't fall off. So yeah. there's actually a technical purpose to it. It's not just for innuendo purposes. Yeah. No, no. And also, you know, you're basically, it's it's important because, you know, if you finger the dough beforehand, it's going to have a better bake, a better rise. It's going to come out. It's going to finish better. Exactly. And, and, it, and it did. <laughs> so that was sort of. Kate's disaster, and she was. Mm. She knew she was. She knew she was in for it. Yeah, and she was. She came. She came last in in the technical. Mm. Um, I feared for Flo more than I feared for her, and I said that at the time. Yeah, because Kate just had a mistake happen, whereas Flo had got everything wrong twice. Yes. Oh, I just want to jump back to the to the first one with the fruitcakes. I did. I I love Neil's. Just you know. Like fucking winging it. Yeah. When when um Paul's gone to him. So what is the uh what is the inside of it or the texture of a teacup? And he goes, good. It's a good. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's really good. <laughs> <laughs> I, I I wonder if his dialogue was written by Chance the Rapper on the Saturday Night Live. <laughs> 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 Where he says about on on, um, on Saturday Night Live this week, yeah. Chance the Rapper did a sketch about ice hockey as a, as a ringside commentator who has never seen a game of hockey. He's an and at NBA one point, commentator. And at one point, when he says, "You know, I'd like to talk to you about about some of the coaches' tech, coaches' t- um, technique and instructions," and he goes, "You should do that." <laughs> um, <laughs> that's the sort of yeah. That's the sort of now. Do you think the coach is going to change those lines up faster? Nope. No, <laughs> no idea what he's talking about. So go go hunt that down. The top three, by the way, for um, the technical was Stephen was third, Julia was second, and Stacey was first. And Stacey was a pretty distant first. That was a yeah, really, yeah. really, really, really good. Well, life. when you heard her bring it, bring out, just had that nice hello. Stacey tap. was Stacey was confident from word one of this one, mm. uh, and and the technique again. We've made fun of the fingering technique stuff, obviously, but. The technique, as you said, it was Paul Hollywood's one. She's watched him use that before on his different shows and, and read up on it, checked up on it. That's the technique he uses. So she just went, I'm using what he tells me to do. Mm, you know, mm. And it worked. Now onto the showstopper. Indeed. Colourful breads. Now, I like the fact that it had to be natural colour. Yeah, you couldn't just like whack out your... <laughs> Which is, what they were talking, which is what Liam talked about when he went, I first heard the challenge and I thought to myself, oh, that'd be great, let's go get some food, die, it'll be fun. <laughs> no, no cochineal. No. No, we don't want we don't want crushed bugs in our in our bread. Well, I mean, there's going to be a quota of crushed bugs because, you know, flour. But be that as it may. So Flo, her concept, Davy Jones's locker. 
Well, Tom Jones's locker is well, she actually then said when the judging Tom Jones. Look, I think Tom Jones's locker would have been a lot more interesting. <laughs> Low it panties probably would have gone along a little bit with what Julia's was. Um, <laughs> it's not unusual. It's not unusual. Um, something something pussycat. Um, <laughs> well, <but>, Delilah. <laughs> you don't want to find Delilah in Tom Jones's locker, do you? No. Given the way that song ends up, mm. but Davy Jones's locker, um, Squid Ink was quite popular. She mm-hmm. used Squid Ink. Um, Kate also went nautical and made a kraken. Mm. Oh, what's cracker lacking? The answer was the kraken. It was a cracker, kraken, a cracker it, of a kraken. It was a cracker of a kraken. Um, Indeed. The kraken actually ended up looking really good. Um, mm. I didn't think Flo's looked that bad either. Um, yeah, but the paprika was overwhelming. Yeah, but Flo, when she made it, was like, this is disgraceful, I'm going home. Mm. She actually said that at one point. Liam. I loved Liam simply because of the pun. <laughs> Neapolitan. Neapolitan. Um, I love it, it simply. It looked huge. It looked, it looked great. <coughs> it looked spectacular. Um, mm-hmm. Sophie made a picnic basket with a lot of different elements. Now, I, on one hand, the basket looked amazing, and the concept mm-hmm. looked like a really interesting concept. But it also had the, it also had the look of. I'm just going to try to impress you by doing as much as I can. Well, picnic baskets are basically done every year. Like someone, like, yeah. like Andrew's, uh, could actually hold the weight because he was a fucking engineer. And yeah, Andrew had done all the had done all the mathematical equations <laughs> the other year, and you know this is the, the man testing. who made this is the man who made his own Ferris wheel. Yes, um, the pies that yeah the pie together made his own pie gear. You know this yeah. is this is that guy who also made a basket that actually supported its weight. <laughs> yeah, um, hers didn't. No, but it did look pretty. But, um, but it gave you the impression it was just, I, I'm going to make something that just looks really awesome mm-hmm. and show you a lot of stuff. But as we get to later, they, they said the bake wasn't quite where it needed to be. Now, I think with Yance, I liked her concept, having a dragon there, but I think she missed out on a flavour pun. Mm-hmm. If she went for a bit of a Harry Potter theme, she could have made a basil <laughs> You know, like she could have she just... She could have. She could have. Just had a I, I think that... Big snake... <laughs> no, we have that. We're about, <laughs> no, we're that about a... to talk about that. Um, so Yen made the the basil the vegetarian dragon. Yes. Um, which, which I I argue by the way when the judges complained about the size of the dragon. And first of all, it's a fucking dragon. It can be whatever size it needs to be. Yeah. Second of all, it's a vegetarian dragon. Yeah. It's, it's going to naturally be small because yeah. you know it doesn't have the iron. No. And who's to say there's an actual dragon there because there's shrooms there. Maybe you've just eaten one of those. We'll get to the shrooms in a minute too. <laughs> um, Stacey made an Ascot hat that looked good. Um, well, we'll get to the judging in a minute, but it looked impressive. Yeah. All the designs looked impressive. I don't think there was one that didn't look no, impressive. No, no. I think it, this was one of the best looking bread weeks I've seen oh, yeah. in a while. The I Owl know. in the Woods by James. That oh, Owl. was so pretty. That Owl was really pretty. Um, yeah. And Stephen made his handbag with chorizo. Oh, my God. You had me at chorizo. Yeah. I mean, and then he had manchego to it. And manchego and, and chorizo. And he um, didn't just do bread. He did, like, bread sticks, like, with the little Yeah, links. the links in there. They're looking for the weak link. Um, oh, you yeah. are the weakest link. Yeah, Good manchego, having manchego and chorizo in the same dish makes it sound a little bit like a Beach Boys song, won't lie. Um, <laughs> yeah, manchego, <laughs> chorizo, <laughs> anywhere you please. Oh. No. Um... <laughs> We're stalling because there's only one left to talk about. <laughs> okay, so we'd heard a rumour that something was going to be looking penisy, and <laughs> I just presumed it was going to be the mushroom because, you know, it's this big phallic thing with a big um red thing on top. I'm thinking, oh, it's going to be a penisy <laughs> mushroom. No, lo and behold. Imagine our surprise when there's a very perky little snail um, under the under the mushroom. Obviously um, not Jewish. <laughs> Snail under mushroom is what it was called, um, and mm. and it was what I loved. Out of a what I loved about the process too was every stage of the process. It got more and more, <laughs> more. penis like. <laughs> the first fold that she did, we both lost it. <laughs> then when she put it in the oven and it started to bake and well grow, we laughed a little bit it's more. Had to rise. We laughed a little bit more. Then when she set it up on the table and it was a penis and it looked like poor old Mr. Ballsack down the bottom, it got even more amusing. And then when she put the smiley face on it and put it under the mushroom, by the time we got to that, 
She deserved to win simply for plating that. It's an anatomically correct snail. We'll come, we'll come back to the snail because we're not done with the snail yet. No. Um, I did, in my notes, I simply wrote down with every step, more and more penis-like. <laughs> um, yeah, and had a good comment, by the way, which was where she said that my superpower is time management. Um, of all of the superpowers one can have, time management is not high on the agenda normally. <laughs> no, but, you know. Somebody needs to keep the someone, meeting. Yeah, someone somebody needs, needs to get the meetings happening on time. Exactly. Someone needs to make sure that we're all getting out on time on a Friday afternoon. <laughs> if only the Justice League had someone with time management, maybe they would have got more people to the cinema and they would have been a bigger hit on their first weekend. Yeah. So mm. um, That's that, what you get for putting Wonder Woman with dickheads. Yeah, that, that and, you know, just get Wonder Woman away from them. Um, you can drag Aquaman along. You know. No, I thought, maybe, but Aquaman's luggage. Yeah, Aquaman long. is one of the superheroes' luggage. Yeah, but Anyone Jason who Momoa can be in my luggage any day. <laughs> any, any, any superhero that can't fly and doesn't own a jet is luggage. Let's just say, you know, I wouldn't mind seeing Julia making Jason Momoa a snail. <laughs> like, just... Of course you wouldn't. Oh, I know. Anyway. Um, Tom's flowers, by the way. Oh, so and, and pretty. F- Fucking Paul Hollywood. Ew. Now, I'm, I'm just going to... The red ones have right. lost their... Paul pension. complains about the definition on the red flag. The man fucking handmade roses out of bread, you dick. And coloured them and got them looking pretty. They looked amazing. Like, they looked seriously amazing. I've bought worse stock at the shops in real flower form. <laughs> right? To make that out of bread? Mm. Shut up, Paul. Yeah. You know, complaining about those sorts of flowers, that's obviously, you know, just, I know, I, no, I'm just, I'm too angry. I'm too angry. But it's ridiculous. It looked good. But what outweighs? Now, Stephen, I thought, was going to get a Hollywood handshake, but instead he got, like, swapped places with Paul. Like, is that higher than a Hollywood handshake or is it lower? Like, what? I think Paul just wanted an afternoon off. He just um, wanted to sit down. He's like, oh, he just wanted an these afternoon shoes are off. killing me. <laughs> <laughs> he wanted an afternoon off. Um, yeah, Flo at this point just turned around and went, mind a disgrace, I'm going home. Yeah. Um, and then at the, the challenge finished and Flo just looked directly down the barrel of the camera and went, some of them are marvellous, aren't they? Yeah. It's like, yeah, they are. All right, so the judging. Now, Yen, they complained there was too much garlic. I'm with Brendan on Twitter about this. What? What's... This thing called too much garlic. She made garlic bread. Hands down win. What? What is this thing about too much? There is no such thing as too much. Ask, ask Christy. <laughs> do I believe there is too much thing as too much garlic in food? No. No. Do my relatives believe there's too much garlic in food? No. Well, they do now, but because I walk near them after I you know, <laughs> just secreting it from pores. <laughs> Look, have we got a vampire problem? No. No. Do you see any vampires around? Not no. really. Why not? Because um, I use since garlic. Since we've been together, never been bitten by a vampire. I'd like to say that's all me. It's all me. <laughs> it is all you. Before you came along, oh, vampires everywhere. Vampire infestation. Um, Couldn't keep the bastards off. away. Um, <laughs> all the fucking shiny twinklingness. <laughs> But he sparkles everywhere. <laughs> it's the worst it's part of killer. about that's the worst part about vampire uh, vampire invasion. It's, it's a fucking, fucking sparkling. Glitter. Yeah, you, right? you there's glitter back. all over your carpet, and, mm. and you can't sleep because all you can see is this mirror ball sparkle above your head. Yeah. Anyway, Liam. Mm. Now, Liam, they said that the flavour was amazing, but the proving wasn't quite as good. Yes. Um, that was a bit of a problem there. Um, for James, again, the design of the owl, wonderful. The hedgehog's not so much. The, the hedgehog looked like it had been squished under the wheels of a lorry. To, clo- <laughs> to, quote, to, to quote Rowan Atkinson in Not the Nine O'Clock News, the hedgehog was crushed under the wheels of a lorry. Um, but there was too much saffron in, in the owl. Every, everything had a very similar review, which was, looks great, your flavours are just out, looks great, you didn't prove it enough. Um, Flo, and Flo's had the opposite. Doesn't look great. Flavors. Oh no, she had all of it. No, they liked it. They liked it. It was it was baked well, but the flavors sucked. sucked. Yeah. Um, they said that the hat from Stacy was amazing, but the flavors weren't good. Um, they said no, that, no, no. No, they said the, they said the flavors weren't good because it wasn't baked properly, and they. No, didn't they say the flavors were good? No, like, they said it wasn't baked properly. Was she yes about then that it looks good? originally? Yeah. Okay. And then when they tasted it, they went, no, 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 this isn't mm. baked properly. Okay. And there's no flavors. Um, yeah. Sophie, they said that the uh, good colour, but it wasn't quite there. Yeah. Um, 
And the, the colour wasn't quite there in some of the, the apple, which didn't look very green. No, it no, looked it mouldy. And incidentally, again, whenever I think coloured bread, I think when I see my bread getting colour, I throw it out. <laughs> it's usually been there for a while. Yeah, um, that said, our penicillin stocks. Oh, never been higher. Yeah. Um, Kate's squid ink apparently was really good. Yeah. They were really happy with that, and she had a crust on her bread. Oh, you could they hear liked. it when they you could hear that. Oh, yeah. Um, Paul looked at Flo's kind of forebodingly. <laughs> uh, it was where they made the Tom Jones locker reference. Yeah. Stevens was unbelievable, and that's what they just said, unbelievable. Yeah. Um, everything they tasted on that was brilliant. And the more you looked at it, the better it looked. Like I, I like the moment, by the way, with Flo, just quickly, where um, they gave her the out. <laughs> you've, you've, you've made it a bit like a focaccia there. Is that what you were going for? No. no. I gave you a way out, yeah, Flo. No. Just say yes, Flo. <laughs> just walk through it. And then Julia's. Now, Paul <laughs> looks at it and goes, so I like the design and doesn't even finish the word design before everybody is in a fit. Yes. And and Paul had tears rolling down his face and Prue is looking at him and going, are you going to pull yourself together, Hollywood? <laughs> and he's just weeping uncontrollably with all the, the, all the tears. So, look. The rye bread was amazing on it, though. <laughs> the rye bread. And everyone focused just on, mm, the flavour of this is really right good, good, isn't it? <laughs> oh, look at, look at the rye. The rye is wonderful. And what was the red one? Was that beetroot? I don't yeah. care, but it was it wonderful because <laughs> it wasn't the snail. And then when he cut the snail, all the gentlemen in the room <laughs> seemed to wince a little bit more than normal. Now, your tweet, this snail gives me life. And my response was, it looks like it could produce half, half of the, the DNA, DNA <laughs> to make life. <laughs> so... The Star Baker, look, it was, it was clearly going to be Stacy until the the hat yeah. wasn't baked properly. So then it had to be Julia because she was right up there with her the whole way yeah. through. Yeah. You know, regardless of snail penis gate, um, <laughs> the bake actually was really good. The, the flavour seemed pretty good. You know, I've just realised mm. I could have been Julia in another life because the first time I this would be interesting. Go on. Okay, so. Back in the 80s, there was a little um, bakery in Glebe called Demeter's Bakery. which, okay. And you could go there and do a little bread course. And I went and I made a snail bread. They said you can make any shape you want, so I made a snail. It tasted fucking horrible, <laughs> but I made it. So I'm just saying, it, I, I don't know if it looked penis-y. If it did, the adults didn't tell me. <laughs> Oh, dear. Anyway. So, Julia wins Star Baker. Yes. And Flo goes home. And she knew. She knew. Yeah. I'll be sad. I'll be sad to do. lose Flo. Everyone be sad to lose Flo. Yeah. She she really reminded me of my mum. Like, she's got the same haircut as my mum. There was a few facial expressions she's pulled. And I'm like, ah, oh, it's my mum. <laughs> um, so, it'll be good not seeing my mum on TV because I won't have a heart attack every time. Yeah, that'll be that'll be yeah. handy for you. So, before we go, just mm. just... Um, one last bit of information for you. Mm. They've announced the Christmas special <gasps> this year for great. No, no, no! Don't look! Don't look! Don't look! I'm hiding this. <sighs> I'm hiding this. Um, so what? Who's going to stop trying to peek around the corner? I've got this hidden from her on the screen. Come on! So what you've got in this series is you've got a couple of bakers that you know. So you've got. I can see Benjamin. Oh, stop looking. So she's, she's, she's trying to cheat everybody. It's not good. Um, you've got Paul Jagger, the guy who created the bread line. So Paul created the yes. bread line. Becca, uh, Becca Line, products from, um, who was a couple of years ago, was the World Shimmy finalist. Mm-hmm. Benjamina, who you've Woo! seen. Yeah, I saw her. Rav. <gasps> yes! Selassie. Oh, yes! And amazingly enough, having been granted day release... By the Mayflower Retirement Village, oh, Val. Yes! 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 This is going to be spectacular. So they've got, they've got Selassie and Val on the same episode. That's oh, going to be amazing. Oh, Christmas just got even better. Didn't it? So with that happy news for all of you, well, look, we're actually breaking news because it's just come out. We're Look at like us. We're the... like real news for baking people. We're like we're like real podcasters. Not really. No. Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> if we got a microphone. <laughs> anyway, next week is Caramel Week. Mm. Yeah, did that? Did just say that it is Caramel Week? 
That'll be interesting. I wonder if they'll have to make caramello koalas. I think they're going with caramel slice, personally. <gasps> yes. Yeah, but you be... know who makes the best caramel slice? Me. My mum. You haven't made me caramel slice yet. Okay, I'll have to do that. You yeah, you... next week. Yeah, you will. And then I'll be telling you it's not as good as my mum's. So just prepare yourself for that. So on that moment of heartbreak, um, my name's still Chris. My name's probably still Christy. Um, <laughs> whether or not I'll be invited back next week. You may not. <laughs> but I'll be back next week and we'll catch you then. Ciao.